Welcome everybody, this is Jason, and the name of today's workshop is The Other Side of the Door. We're going to be focusing on building doors and windows. So let's get started. For many new creators, creating doors and windows can seem very daunting. When broken down, Door and window construction is a lot like building regular objects aside from a few extra steps involved. So in addition to the standard group of resources that one would edit on a regular object, the CTSS, TXMT, TSTR, etc., a single tile door has four GMDC. There's the north frame. This is the, the part that's outside and unmoving. There's the south frame. There's the north door. This is a part of the object that moves. And there's the south door. Double doors have six GMDC. This is, so you have, you have, in addition to the right door frame, or the right door, you have the left door. And windows normally only have two, just the north and south frames because they don't have any moving parts. Secondly, one tile doors and windows have three OBJD. So you would have to generate multiple GUID, obviously. So there's the master GUID, and then there are the two tiles that it reserves. Each of these OBJD must be assigned a GUID if you're making a standalone door. In addition, the master GUID for straight and diagonal segments must be linked. Thirdly, each door has a wall mask or a special TXTR overlaid on the wall to create a transparency in the wall segment. So essentially what the wall mask does, it cuts a hole in the plain wall so that you can't see the wall through the frame. The first step is going to be extracting the door parts. To get started, we're going to launch CMPE in Object Workshop, make a clone of a Maxis door or, or a window, if you want to do a window, that has the approximate dimensions of the door you want to make. Make sure that you select the straight version. This is important. Go ahead and click Start. and wait forever for the file table to load. Then we go other, then we go door, and we want one of these that has the thumbnail. That means that this is the straight version of the door. See that we've got, for example, colonial tract door and then colonial tract door without the thumbnail. The one without the thumbnail is the diagonal. Let's find, okay, here's a good one. Oaktown Classic Door. So this is just a regular one tile door for base game. And we don't need to do anything special with it. We're just getting a rough shape of it. We go next, clone. Finish. We're not doing anything with the scene graph because this is just a throwaway object. And I'm gonna call you throwaway door. There's already one, so I'm just gonna name this one two. Next, we enter the door frame North GMDC. With all of the subsets selected, we export the selection and we're just going to rename it something that identifies it as the North side door frame. So when you say everything selected, that includes the wall shadow that appears in the GMDC? I don't think that has a shadow plane, but well, we'll see. 
it doesn't okay. it doesn't super matter because we're going to use this as a template to build our door. Okay, so I can just do the one G thing in the GMDC. Yes. Okay. So then we move to the south door frame GMDC, and we repeat the process. Then we remove we move to the R door north GMDC. And this is a moving part, so we we just repeat that process, and then we enter right underscore door underscore south and repeat the process. In SIMPE, that looks like this. This is the door frame north. I suppose we don't need the wall shadow. Throw away, I'm, I've already done this, so I'm just going to save this over throw away frame north. But if you're doing it for the first time, just name it something like that. And once again, on the south door frame, we just export, that becomes throw away frame south. This is the north door. So we're calling it throw away door north. And this is the south. Throw away door south. Building the mesh. Import the extracted meshes into Milkshape, making sure to rename each group as you import, like so. So you can see in this in this image, I have named all of the different parts. The handles, the doors, and make sure to label each side north and south. Then, using the imported frame as a guide, build your own door mesh, as I did in, in this example. Make sure to label each each group clearly. In this case, I'm just taking a simple door frame and adding some bars on the inside. When you're done, export the entire project as an obj. Import a wavefront. And we'll start with throw away frame north. We rename it here. Then we import throw away frame south. Same deal. Now, once again, we import. Throw away door north. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a template. Throw away door south. We, rena we rename it like so. OK, so we've built a template. Now we have a general idea. Let me make it bigger. Where the north and south objects need to be placed so that we can build a door. Now, let's import the frame. Heavy frame north. And you can see it's quite a bit shorter than 
than the original Maxis door, which might be an issue when we do the wall mess, but I have a plan for this. Let's do heavy frame south, and I'm going to rename it frame underscore south. Then we import door north, so heavy door north. Then we import one more time, heavy door south. What are you naming this new door? Uh, for the new door, with every set, I just went frame underscore north, frame, frame underscore south, just like that. So when I imported the the objects that I had downloaded from the workshop, they're not making new groups. It's just there's like one and then just one group. It's not because okay. like when it did. The, the issue is that all of the subsets are named the same thing, so you would need to rename oh. each subset before you import. This is why I'm doing okay. this, this way, because okay. Milkshape is kind of funny like that. If you import just two objects with the same name, it okay. will group them together. Okay, then that's definitely it. Okay. okay, so I'm going to delete the template door, because we don't need it. Then control A, go over to the materials. We're going to use this nice wood texture and just assign like that. Let's add the grate. The first thing I don't like is this little crossbar. So we're just going to select these vertices like so get rid of them. Now we import the object that says great. We don't need all of this so no that's wrong. First we grab the corners. Grab the grate. Don't move it up, just move it on the X. It looks like we can fit like two bars across. So we're going to delete all of these, these other bars going across. Let me hide these so that I don't delete any vertices unintentionally. So they need two bars across. We only need, well, let's, let's keep all of the horizontal bars. In order to make it fit correctly, we need to scoot these over. Let's grab the entire grate, move it like so. And then... Sorry for interrupting. Um, I have a question. I'm trying to select the grate. I have select selected in the model and I have in the groups the grate selected but it won't like select anything when I drag my mouse across. Like, do you know why that would be? Okay, it has to do with the way that you select. Okay. If you want to select the entire object, you go to the groups tab, highlight oh, okay. it and click select. If you want to select individual vertices, go to the model tab, select, make sure that your vertex button is selected uh, okay. and just do that. All right, I think it was, I didn't have vertex selected, thank you. No problem. Once we've got it sized correctly, 
make sure that it's in the correct relative position, just scoot it down like that. And this is going to be, we name this one great underscore north. Unhide the south door. Go back to groups, select the great in groups, only the great. Then we go edit, duplicate selection, and making sure that the X axis is locked on the move tab. We just slide this till it's about the center of the south door. Go back over here where it says duplicate, we rename that great. South. Okay. Unhide all. Control A. The workshop folder. And I'll call that heavy door all. Assembling the straight door. With the mesh assembled and exported, and textured if it needs to be, let's start building the new door. Clone a straight door segment from Object Workshop to get started. Then for the straight door, start with the door frame North GMDC. In the mesh group importer pop-up, select replace in the first drop-down and then and the name of the subset that you're replacing in the second drop down. So in this one, we're only adding that, or we're only replacing the north door frame only. For all of the others, we're going to select nothing in the second drop down. Repeat, we repeat that with door frame south, door north, and door south. If you're using resources from my workshop, we'll need to add a subset for the bars. Let's go back to Object Workshop and select this same door, Oaktown Classic Door, but this time it's in earnest. Just call it Heavy Workshop Door for now. The Scene Graph. give it its own unique name, and I'm going to go dash straight. Here we're going to save this as Heavy Workshop Door Straight. Then you can see that there are four GMDC, just like with the previous door. This is Door Frame North. I don't really use wall shadow, so I'm not going to need that. We go to heavy door all. The frame north is going to replace the door. Then every other every other object, we're just going to select nothing in the drop down. No, nothing. And then if you see, I, I misspoke. If you if you select nothing in the first dropdown, then the second dropdown is automatically disabled. So the only object we're replacing is with frame north. See, it's got that smaller door frame shape. Then we go to frame south. 
This time, frame north, we do the nothing. Great north, we don't need. Frame south is the one that we want to replace. Nothing here, nothing here. And we can just get rid of that wall shadow because I'm not going to use it. You can if you want to, it's just my personal preference. I'm not huge on, on shadows. I just normally get rid of the shadow plane. So here, this is door north. Here we need two actual, we need two subsets. Don't need frame north. Door north is going to replace door. Great north, we're, we're just going to select add in the drop down. Frame south is nothing. That one's nothing and that one's nothing. And somehow it got added. Here, let's rename that great underscore north to just great. Have a look. Yay, it has bars. And finally, this is the, the south door. So same as before. That's nothing. We don't need great north. We don't need frame south. And the door, we're just going to replace where it says door. Then we go to groups and we just name we rename great south as great. And that's a GMDC. Because we don't have a, a subset for great yet, we're going to add that. Let's expand that out a little. So first we're going to go to the door straight SHPE. We add, we select and add a line. Then we rename this one great. We're going to commit. And we just do the same thing in the south door shape. We call this great. And we add this line uh, that's going to refer to a TXMT. These are wall masks. We're not going to get into those yet. The shadow, we don't really need that. Let's grab the wood texture and clone it for now. Build DXT. And we're looking for the one that says great. Just replace that like so. And after it's after the dash where it says light wood, I'm just going to call this great. So we've got the SHPE, we've got the TXTR. We now need to add a TXMT. We're looking for the wood TXMT. We're just going to clone that. Where it says door light wood, we're just going to overwrite great. And then where it says light wood, once again, we overwrite great. As a last step, we go to the file list and we overwrite great. Commit. Save that right quick. Object tools, fix integrity. 
don't rename anything in the scene graph. Now let's go back up to one of the door GMDCs and see what happened. So you can see the bars are no—they're no longer just that gray. They've got their own texture now. So we added the subset correctly. We've done—we've done the GMDC. Now, in the master OBJD, the one with the coordinates, adjust the price of the door, and then we assign each of the OBJD with its own GID. There are methods for generating GIDs, but I'm I'm not going to I'm going to get into that more in in an upcoming workshop called Object Lessons. For now, let's just say 50 bucks. 50 simoleons. And I am going to My GID spreadsheet. This is an easy cheat. This is a cheat for me because I create so many objects. I'm constantly building new objects, so I constantly need new GIDs. Keep it simple. We're going to go D, E, and F. Work and then I'm going to call this workshop door straight. The master is going to be D. And because, well, let's say we want to make it recolorable. So we check that here. Update all M mats. Update. And then this one, we make it E. Remember, for each GID, we have to make this its own thing. So we need, we need three for this one. The U in GUID is unique. Okay, we've added our GUIDs. Next, we replace the main door texture and the wall mask TXTRs. The wall masks only really need to be done if the shape of your door warrants it. If it, is, if it more or less conforms to the shape of the Maxis door, this step can be omitted. In my case, it's a little bit different. Because this, this was this was kind of a specialty door that I did with a set. What I'm going to do is export that right now. Back to SimPE. Let's go to the TXTR. The first thing that we need to do is replace that wood texture. Then, this is a straight diagonal. So, we need to add, for this one in particular, we need to add the diagonal wall mask. It's a little strange, but it will make more sense. Then, this one, we need the straight wall mask. There are, so be, be sure you're adding the right wall mask to the right TXTR. You've got one that says zero, zero, zero north wall mask. That is the one that takes the straight. And then you've got one that says straight diagonal and that takes the diagonal. Uh, Digi said, how do you know how high or low you should edit the wall mask to be if it needs editing? Or is that one of those things you just have to crap shoot until you get it right? It's kind of a trial and error thing especially if you're making like a curved window like Balco Pat she had a really hard time with her windows but do I still have milk shape open there is kind of a trick no 
let's make this window textured. With the grid on, just do the boot scoop boogie till you've got more or less three tiles, like so. Just get it as close to three tiles as you can, and then take a screenshot. You can actually hide. Let's hide the door components. Just take a screenshot and then get out your 256 by 256, uh, or I'm sorry, 512 by 256 wall mass texture and uh, everything inside the frame here, that, that just gets punched out and then everything outside that's just solid white, the straight door. So we replace the main door, to, we replace the wall masks, then we edit the description in the CTSS. Commit that. Assembling the diagonal door. With the straight door done, it's time to focus on the diagonal door. We return to Object Workshop. We select the diagonal version of the straight door that we just cloned. In most cases, the mesh doesn't need to be modified. The only thing that we really need to adjust is the wall mask. As we did with the straight door, we're going to replace door frame north, door frame south, door north, and door south GMDCs. So we've got this straight door. We grab the diagonal version of that door. I'm going to add a 50, but I'm probably going to have to update it because for some reason, this version of SimPE doesn't always capture the price correctly. Here, we're going to call it I know that's misspelled. It doesn't matter. The thing about the scene graph, the more typos, the better, because then, then you know that it's got a unique scene graph name. Here, we're going to call this Heavy Workshop Door Diagonal. We got to the GMDC, and we're using the exact same object. Heavy Door All. We're replacing the we're replacing the door subset with frame north, and we don't want to do anything with any of these other objects. So we're just doing the same thing over again. You can well, it does have its own texture. That's interesting. It is a diagonal door though. This is the south frame, so that's the only object that we're going to add. Just get rid of that wall shadow. Commit that one.
and here we just need we the door north replaces the door and we're adding the grate. And we rename that grate as just grate without the underscore north. Last one. and we rename that as just great. Now we assign a GID to each of the OBJD. First, let's do the GUIDs. need to start a new row. This needs to be a 70. There's a 70 and the 71. And because this is, I guess, its own unique thing, it has an M mount. Let's update and commit that. What did you say it has? An it M has mount? it has an M mount. So this is this is recolorable locally, which is bizarre to me because this is it's the Oaktown door. And I mean, normally the diagonal will be slaved to the straight door, but this one is not for some reason. Oh, so uh, it could have like yeah, it's, it's going to have its own independent set of recolors. Doesn't make sense to me. So in this case, if you're if you're cloning from the Oaktown door, as I am. Go ahead and add the texture. We don't need the wall shadow because I got rid of that. And then this is the diagonal wall mask. So we're going to replace that with the same diagonal wall mask, the wider one. And this one is the straight wall mask. That's the narrow one. We don't need to. We change the door's description in the CTSS. Let's see if we're happy with the price first. Yes, it did. It did grab the same price. What's it look like in the CTSS? We're good. We don't need to do that. One more step. Linking both doors. We need to link the straight door and the diagonal door. Make sure that you have the master OBJD for each door selected. We're going to, well, we're going to open a separate instance because that's the easiest way to do it. We copy the straight doors, master GUID, and paste it in grid align git in the diagonal doors OBJD. Then we take the diagonal doors, master GUID, and we paste that in the diagonal git of the straight doors OBJD. It looks like that. So we just move this one down here 
and we move this one over here. Hold on, um, just a bit. Pat has asked, may I ask how you calculate correct size at diagonal parts while masked? Uh, for me, it's, it's again, it's just trial and error, but the uh, also the method that I showed DG. I didn't know Boko Pat joined us. Uh, I thought she was working. Oh, yeah, she popped in a while ago. Oh. Uh, I am working, actually. I came in late a little bit. Uh, hey, it's, it's good to I hear your voice. Hi. Hi, it's good to hear your voice, too. Thanks. Uh, Sorry okay. for the later. No, that's you're fine. Then we go to this OBJD. This is the straight door. Remember, it has the three. We select the one without grid coordinates. So we take the master grid from the straight door, and we hop over to the master GID from the diagonal door, and where it says grid line GID, we just paste that value there. Commit, save. Now we take the diagonal doors, master GID, hop back over to the straight door, and where it says diagonal GID, we just paste that like so. Commit, and save. Now, we go to our door. We said it was around 50 simoleons. And there's the straight door. And there's the, oh, okay, that's messed up. Oh, I might have, well, Oh, and I did. I didn't add the subset. Oh, that's a bother. At least it's linked correctly, right? So you're saying that the diagonal didn't have the subset for the grate? That's why it's not showing up. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. that's. I forgot to add that in the shape. See, it animated correctly. It's just I didn't label the do the the door parts, so it's yeah. I mean, it's something that I can that I could take the time to go back and fix, but for the for the purpose of the workshop, it it works. Yeah. See, I just. Uh, If I, w I mean, if I were serious about this, I would go back and replace these and then enable the and then do the same thing for the diagonal door because you can see it's also. Yeah, I just I just mislabeled the components, but. That's OK. There's a lot of fiddly bits. In yeah, that you yeah, keep it, track of. Exactly. It's just, it's a lot of adjustment. It's a lot of trial and error, but the basic components of the workshop are there. And that's it.